Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we need to make ourselves a little bit of science. And I would prefer to do that before we get ourselves another orbital flight going. So realistically, what do we need here? We need like six science, 5.7 to be exact. We want to have the experiment storage unit before we do any more work in orbit. There's not really a lot of point in continually flying to orbit and just getting one round of science the whole way. So we're not going to do that. Well, let's hop into mission control, see if there's anything interesting in here. Not really. Okay. So we'll go ahead and leave that, and we'll hop into the VAB. And we're going to get ourselves a little bit of science on the ground here. Of course, you can get science from basically anywhere in the KSC at the uh, early period here. So that'll be fine. We don't really have a lot to get around with. So we're going to have to do a build that I credit to Quill 18. I'm not sure if uh, I'm not sure if others have come up with it first, but I saw it first on his channel. So we're going to just flip a command pod on its side and we're going to attach a second command pod here and we're just going to roll around and grab ourselves some science. Of course, in the middle, we are going to put in a service bay. I can't remember what his exact build was, but I remember he rolled around with this. It's been a long time since I've watched that. Uh, we'll open up the service bay, and inside of that we'll put our science components. And let me just place that a little more center centered there. There we go. And we are going to grab our... I mean, we don't need a Mystery Goo inline unit. We don't need to be too careful about our weight distribution here either. We'll just put a barometer. We will put a thermometer something like that, and that's all of our science experiments that we have right now. So we'll just go ahead and close that, and let's see, that's no caps, trust caps, solid caps. It's a little sad that there's not a dark variant of it, but I guess it'll do. I'm not even going to bother saving this, and we'll just go. I've never actually built this before, so do we do this via the roll? Presumably it's via roll. Okay, so this way is yaw this way is pitch yeah so it would indeed be roll sounds good okay so we need to angle ourselves over this way a little bit and rolling this direction got it so we'll just head on over and attempt to hold a little bit of an attitude here it's going to be a little complicated for sure we need sas on SAS on might actually help. Actually, this does help quite a lot. It does mean that we essentially have a permanent braking effect. And it does also bear noting we're going to run out of electric charge fairly quickly doing this. But, let's see, that's still the launch pad. We're going to hop off of the launch pad here. This is the crawler way. Okay. So we're going to grab a crew report. And we're going to EVA. And we're going to grab an EVA report. And we're going to hop back in. We're going to grab a temperature scan, atmospheric pressure scan, and a mystery goo observation. And that will give us all of the science that we need. So we'll go ahead and recover that vessel. Now we could go around and gather the science at all of the locations. I found that not to be entirely necessary, so I generally don't do that. All we wanted was enough science to be able to get the experiment storage unit. So we'll go ahead and grab that. Wonderful. There's more than enough science in the game to unlock every technology. So we'll hop into the VAB, and we are going to work on, not this, we're done with this thing. We're going to work on the Hopper 2 here, which is mostly good to go, as is. I would like to potentially get a rechargeable battery pack in there just to make things a little bit less uh, squishy on the power levels. So we'll just drop our thermometer... That does not want to snap where I want it. Okay. You know what? We'll just leave that be. And we'll just drop the battery pack in. Okay. Do we have to drop the, the heat shield for this to work properly? Perhaps. Apparently. Okay. So we'll just drop in the rechargeable battery pack fairly centrally located there. That'll be fine. Okay. We'll go ahead and close that. Double check our science, see if we need anything else in there. We've got the press map barometer. There is a science junior, so we should absolutely bring a science junior along. And I can't remember. The impact tolerance is six meters per second 
on the service bay, it is 14. So we want the science junior to be above the service bay. That's fantastic. That'll go right there. And then we'll drop the service bay there. And then the actual booster will go right there. Cool. Now, this is a one-seater com command pod here. So that means that we are absolutely not... Let's see, this is also crew, crew capacity of one. Wow, words are very difficult all of a sudden. Crew capacity of one on both of these means that we're not going to be able to reset our science junior, but the rest of, or our mystery goo. Our science junior or our mystery goo. But the rest of our experiments are rerunnable for now. And we're going to go ahead and put in an experiment storage unit right here. It doesn't exactly fit as well as it did. I'm not sure if this rework was something like the, the shape rework was one of the things that restock did, or if this was something that's actually in stock, but it doesn't fit quite as well as it used to, but that's okay. Since we're coming back with a fair amount more weight, we should also consider bringing in some drogue shoots, and we're going to bring in a pair of radial mount drogue shoots, and then this decoupler will go here, the drogue shoots will go, drogue, drogue shoots, okay, there we go. The drogue shoots will go here, perfect. So what is our actual thrust to weight here? It's not great. And our overall Delta V is enough, but not by a huge margin. So that definitely has a little bit of concern to it. We could think about putting in additional fuel, but I don't think that's strictly speaking necessary. We also don't have the aerodynamics to uh, put in any fins or anything. This will be fine as is. We're gonna save this as a variant of the hopper too. This is not really a fundamental rework, although I'm looking at this here. That just looks better. <laughs> there we go. Now the markings are on the same side. Perfect. We'll go ahead and save that. And who are we going to bring on this one? I mean, Valentina and Jeb are pretty much equal at this point. So I guess we'll bring Jeb. It doesn't really matter. We'll go ahead and launch this and we're going to be able to go to orbit and get a lot more science this time. So that is excellent. Any moment now, KSB. There we go. So we can immediately run the material study, and that is something we should absolutely do. We immediately run that, we keep that experiment, and we recover the vessel. OBS was thinking I was hovering over the studio mode button for a moment there. I, I don't know why. I wasn't. <laughs> Thanks, OBS. Well, that's 7.5 science right there. And we're going to put this out on the pad again. We're going to be able to harvest that science again. And actually, no, I, I was thinking about putting a scientist in the pod, but we don't really have much for automated systems right now. So we're going to go ahead and put a material study here. I'll, we'd, we'd have to have like a stay put Nick in there for that to work. So we would keep th that experiment there, and then we're going to recover that again. And we're just trying to get these out of the way for right now, right? Like, our Science Junior and our Mystery Goo, they're going to be a bit holding us back for a little while. Just because they're difficult to get all of the science from, right? So we're going to go back out there, and we might be able to get one more. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, we can get one more here. Okay, so we'll grab that. Our min science is 0 0.1, which is maybe a little on the low side, but we're going to go ahead and recover that. Sometimes in the past, I've gone to like 1.0 as the min science, and that does seem to make it feel a little bit better, but it also means that you miss out on some science. There's no doubt about that. Okay, so now we're going to head out again, and we're going to do a very, very small hop just to get the in-flight data. All we need to do is lift off of the pad a tiny, tiny amount for that to happen. So we're going to do exactly that. Just looking to get our Science Junior data that's easy to get. SAS will go on. Oh, hey, look at that. Jeb can now hold prograde and retrograde. That's neat. And we'll sit right around here on the throttle and see how that goes. Okay. 0 0.94, 0 0.99, 1.0. Okay, so we're going to grab our material study, and we're going to drop back down. Cool. Fantastic. 
We're going to recover that. And the question is, how many more times are we going to do that? Are we going to do that two more times? I mean... It's going to be some uh, returning or diminishing returns on the science value, for sure. But we did just get 17.5 science from that flight. I say flight. We lifted like an inch off the ground. Okay, let's let's keep doing it and we'll get all of the low flight. Of course, it's not that easy to get the high in flight data. Once we get to the point where we can reset those experiments in space, that's going to be a pretty big deal. But for right now, that does make things a little bit complicated. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what this thrust to weight is like. Okay, this'll do. We'll just burn a little bit of fuel, and off we go, grabbing our material study. Fantastic. What a long journey. And we'll recover the vessel. This is some very tedious work at this point, for sure. But that's okay. We are getting some good baseline science out of it, and we're going to be done with this on one after one more flight, so I think that's completely fine. Only 3.8 science from that one, but that's not a problem. And we are then going to launch this one final time, and we're going to do the same thing again here. Just a very slight liftoff, grabbing some data, and then landing. Just needs to be very, very minor. SAS on, throttle up to about here-ish. Here. Grab that material study and land. Perfect. So we'll keep that experiment, recover the vessel. And that should be us done with that phase of the science collection. That's really, really good. I mean, done until we get more experiments, I suppose. But I think pr pretty much all of the other experiments, if I recall correctly, pretty much all of them are... Let's see, high power electrics. That, that gives us things like the Gigantor. Uh, let's see, electronics gives us the seismic accelerometer. But basically everything else is reusable. So that'll be fine. Let's hop back into the VAB. And this time, we need to take Jeb into orbit. That's going to be the most efficient way to do this. It's not really great to target the high-flying stuff. But we are going to need to acquire enough science to be able to get a two-seater at this point. We need to up upgrade our cockpit to a two- or three-seater so that we can bring along a scientist to reset these experiments. That's going to be our next goal. So we're going to throttle all the way up. And we're going to begin our ascent. There's still a material study of 0.2 here. I'm going to grab it. I'm not happy about it, though. <laughs> okay, so we'll keep that. And up we go. We're still going into orbit. We'll close the doors on the Science Junior. We're not going to get any more Science Junior data this time. Like I said, the Science Junior and Mystery Goo data will be far more efficient once we're able to get a two-seater cockpit. So that will be our goal eventually, and we're just going to start heading downrange a little bit here. Excellent. Just sticking with a little bit more efficient of an ascent profile, if we can at all help it. It's not going to be an optimal one by any means. I never do an optimal ascent profile, but it's going to be more efficient, shall we say. Excellent. Apoapsis height is currently around 8 kilometers, and that's absolutely fine. And up we go. We're almost to 45 degrees here, and we are at an apoapsis height of 15 kilometers. We're definitely moving pretty good here. We need to punch through the atmosphere a little bit more. Heading is staying very true. I'm very happy to see that. That's always great. 35 kilometers is our current apoapsis height. We should grab our temperature scan and mystery goo observations at this point. And the mystery goo observation cannot be reset, of course. We're definitely experiencing some atmospheric uh, effects here. Okay, we're targeting 75 kilometers, so we'll go ahead and call that good. 
and we will just ride up to space. For now, we're going to just hold prograde. And at the apoapsis here, we will just go ahead and boost this on up. That is not exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Well, uh, maybe we'll ignore this node. <laughs> Even if we just go suborbital, that's fine. I'm not too concerned about it. So time to apoapsis is about a minute and a half. We'll go ahead and warp towards that a bit. Yeah, we've definitely burned a lot of our fuel. We just didn't get quite get enough horizontal speed, I think, in the initial ascent. That's okay. Suborbital is absolutely fine for what we're looking for here. Yeah, it'll be okay. So for now, we will go ahead and grab our crew report and our atmospheric pressure scan. And now we're going to collect all of our experiments up here. We're going to grab a temperature scan. And of course, we can't do a mystery goo observation or material study here. Okay. I suppose we could just do a re-entry burn if we're going to go suborbital. It would be faster. You know what? That's completely fine. We're not going to get any additional science by going orbital, really. We've returned to the surface. What? How's that a world first milestone? <laughs> okay, sure. We've done that several times, but okay, KSP, if that's what you want to say. So I think we're just going to do a re-entry burn here. We've got plenty of plenty of uh, fuel for it. So yeah, we'll just go suborbital. It'll be faster anyway. Okay, we have hit atmosphere now. Wonderful. And down we go. We're going to take a much steeper descent profile than we have previously. There's no doubt about that. How long of a burn do we have? 29 seconds. Okay. Good to know. Of course, we don't really have any, like, impact, uh, impact speed here, but that's fine. Actually, we might if we pop this up. Uh, no, this. Yeah, okay, so it wants us to suicide burn in 40 seconds here. That seems fairly reasonable, but I'm going to burn a little sooner than that. <laughs> we don't want to actually land this necessarily. So we're going to burn at like 10 seconds before. That'll be fine. And yeah, we, we don't have the fuel to do a full suicide burn. So we're going to go ahead and begin our burn... Right about now. Excellent. So we'll burn off this fuel, and we're just going to come in nice and suborbital, get our re-entry burn going. Oh, uh, yeah, that's slowing us down nicely. In fact, we don't even need to... Uh, we don't need, even need to do the full burn right now. Okay, sounds good. We're at about 20 kilometers above the surface, and we have 18 seconds of burn left. We should continue our burn now that heating effects have popped in again. And so we shall. I just want to keep us from overheating at this point. That's the primary goal. We are now in drogue shoot range, and that's great. We are speeding up again, and we're going to burn off the rest of our speed here. And there we go. Fantastic. And we're going to fire our drogue shoots. And our main shoot. Okay, and down we go. We're going to grab our science, and honestly, it's probably best that we only went suborbital here. Like I said, it's much faster than going orbital and returning from orbit. So that does mean that we'll get a fair amount more science per episode, if we do it this way for right now, while we're just collecting this, this data. But we definitely needed more horizontal velocity. There's no doubt about that. And I think that also is indicative of the fact that we need additional delta V. We've added a fair amount of weight to this. And that's most likely what we were really experiencing there. So we'll just go ahead and warp down to the water. And that has told us a lot of information, of course. And here we go. We don't actually need to have the KER landing open all the time. 
There we go. In fact, we don't really need the orbital or surface because that's mostly up here. So we'll just go ahead and close all of that KER stuff for now. We'll grab a crew report and an atmospheric pressure scan. We will go ahead and collect all of our data that we've got here and we will temperature scan. And now we will go ahead and recover our vessel. So we should get a good amount of science from that. And we definitely need more Delta V. There's no doubt about that. So what do we get here? Okay, fantastic. And this is what we end up getting. So that's a lot of science. That's like 60 science. We'll hop into the R&D here, and we've already got advanced rocketry, which gives us the Terrier. And general construction would give us like a Mark I crew cabin. However, the P reentry module... Does that have a reaction wheel on it? I don't think it does. It does not. That does have crew capacity of two. The other option is that we go into general construction, and that gives us the crew cabin. Heavy rocketry is not something we're really interested in just yet. Where would we need to go if we wanted to get advanced flight control? Okay, yeah, that's where the Mark II command pod is. Okay. Hmm. Well, we could go the flight control route. That does give us a small inline reaction wheel. So the fact that the P does not have a reaction wheel doesn't actually hurt us that much. So we're going to go ahead and grab that for our research. We're also going to come in here and upgrade our astronaut complex so that we can perform EVAs. Wonderful. And what are we going to do here? None of those. Okay, sure. <laughs> we're going to hop into the VAB and we're going to need to design ourselves our Hopper 3. Excellent. So we're going to go ahead and actually we're going to make a full new vehicle here and we're going to call this the Hopper 3. Excellent. And we're going to use the P reentry module here. Now that does weigh virtually twice as much as the Mark 1 command pod and it doesn't have a reaction wheel. So that's definitely something to consider. Beige padding, huh? I'm a fan of beige. Beige is excellent. Okay, so we've got that there. We're going to bring this back in virtually the same way. So the experiment storage unit goes there. And then we're going to have a Mark 16 parachute on top. Now, these star shots seem somewhat new. What exactly do these do? It's a cargo part. Okay. Interesting. Well, we're just going to grab some drogue chutes on here. We're going to put on a pair of them, like so. We know that our chutes are plenty sufficient. And we're going to then put on... We're going to need a small inline reaction wheel, although that's very small. We may actually want to mount that, like, up here instead. Okay. So what is the actual torque here? 5.0 compared to the torque of this guy, which is the same. Okay. And this actually requires less electric charge. No, this requires less electric charge. This requires 50% more electric charge. Okay, sure. So then we're going to put in our Science Junior here. There we go. And I can never remember what side they get out of on these things. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's this side. I think. I think this is a hatch. We'll find out. We'll test that in a bit. So we're going to put in a service bay, of course. And inside of that service bay, we will put in our science experiments. That will be, well, we're going to need like a uh, flight computer at some point. So we're going to turn off symmetry. And we will place that up here on like this side. Next, we're going to put in a battery. Maybe even two. Yeah, we'll put in two something kind of like that and we will go into our science then and we will put in our mystery goo containment unit we'll just park that right about here there we go and we'll put in our barometer that can go over here to try to balance the weight a little bit and the thermometer same thing over here to try to balance that weight out a bit 
And that's all of the science experiments that we have access to right now. So we'll go ahead and close that. Now, I'm assuming that we're coming, coming down this direction. I don't think we have any access to ladders at this point. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's no ladders. Okay, so that could make things interesting trying to get down, down there, but uh, we'll see. We'll just have to use our EVA suits probably for now. Next, we're gonna need a heat shield. So we're gonna put in a heat shield there for re-entry. And then that of course is the stage that we come back with. So we're going to need a TD-12 decoupler. And we are already at half of our, our parts. So that's exciting. We're gonna put a T-400 here. And then we're gonna put a Terrier liquid fuel engine here. Now Terriers no longer have alternators on them. So firing this engine will not regenerate our power. We're just going to have the power that we have for now. We don't really have any other way to handle that. So that's a little bit sad for sure, but we're going to need another decoupler here. This is our orbital stage. So structural, no, uh, why am I coupling? There we go. Decoupler. <laughs> Fantastic. And then we're going to put in a bunch of T400s. This is going to be four of them here. We're 23 out of 30 here. And the question is, what is the thrust to weight going to be on a swivel right here? 1.08. So that's just squeaking in. Okay. I like it. We're going to, of course, rotate all of this like that just to be consistent. There we go. So we'll go ahead and save that, and inside of this, who are we going to be bringing? We're not bringing Bill, we're bringing Jeb and Bob. Bob is, of course, going to be responsible for resetting these experiments. And that'll be absolutely fine. Now that we can reset our experiments, we can get a lot of science per flight. Like, a ludicrous amount of science per flight. So that'll be great. And we just have the thrust to wait here. Now, our Delta V is not necessarily amazing looking here. You can see we've got like 2100. It doesn't look like a lot until you set the altitude into space. There we go. So the idea here is that this gets us up into space and then we circularize and come back with our second stage. That's the concept anyway. Now a T400 might be a little overkill for that. We'll feel it out and if we need to downsize this stage we can. This first stage is not uh, amazingly powerful. There's no doubt about that. And I would like to see it be a little bit more powerful. We could try to do some like strap on boosters, but we don't really have much for radial decouplers right now. So what we'd have to do pretty much is like a thumper down here that decouples. It wouldn't go great or just something that's attached that we cannot detach like this. That would be dumb and we're not going to do it. <laughs> we'll try this, but that is a next episode sort of thing. So next episode, we are going to go to orbit with the Hopper 3, and we are going to get a ludicrous amount of science. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.